Hi guys, it's Colette and today I'll be taking you behind the scenes to have a look at the polish testing that I did for this holographic four leaf clover accent water marble. And if you've seen the tutorial, you already know that the actual manicure turned into a little bit of a disaster. And this is a really good example of how you can do all of your homework, so to speak. You can do all of your testing. You can be pretty sure you know what you're doing and you get to the actual manicure and it all goes sideways. So be sure to subscribe to My Simple Little Pleasures if you'd like to see more behind the scenes and more nail tutorials and turn on those notifications so you know when I have a new upload. And if you'd like to see the experimenting and testing that went on before I actually had this little mini disaster, just stay tuned. Alrighty, hopefully this round of testing won't be quite so long as my last round of testing since I know what I'm doing this time. I have the four colors that I want to use and then I have some backup colors and I have some kind of last resort plans if none of these work. This darkest one is Pine Boughs. Then we have Last Harvest, uh, Mint Julep, and Enjoyment. And these are all colors by LaRoe Hollows. And I'm just going to get these opened up. And... The plan is to do a four leaf clover, which is a simple design that's not really that simple. Um, they can be very tricky to fit on the nail and to find polish that really wants to create nice rings that work well uh, to make the design. So I'm just going to get started going from lightest to darkest with these and see how it goes along. Okay, this is a little bit off center, but is a pretty decent bullseye wasn't spreading super well toward the center. I almost felt like I was putting in too much polish, but we'll see if it gets messy after I draw on the design and dip my test strip. So I'm just going in toward the center and trying to keep it as even as possible. And then going perpendicular to those. And yeah, I can tell there's quite a bit of polish in the middle, partly by how my strokes didn't go all the way in. I'm actually going to re-stroke them a little bit. You can see that's making the design a little bit more defined. And they're still nice and wet, so I'm not getting any tearing going on. I actually really like the way they look together so far in the cup. Oops. Got a little bald spot there, so I'm going to just try to dip it out. And sometimes these are easier to close than others. Sometimes they really get stubborn. That's a little better. So, for my paper today, I have just two sides prepped right now. This side is with the black and the darkest green. And then I just make little marks over here for reference. This side is with the three lighter greens. And, gosh, since this is lopsided, this is a little harder to dip. I'm just going to turn it a bit and try to fit this in here and dip in. And that's kind of messy. You can see that the center uh, part of the clover design is not real defined. That's generally a sign that I'm using too many drops of polish, even though they looked like they were spreading out. There was still kind of too much in the center and it got messy like that. So, 
for my next round, I'm going to go darkest to lightest, but I'm going to try and do like two less drops. So I'm actually going to start in the middle, if that makes sense. You'll see as I go along here. This is a total of just 10 drops instead of a total of 12 drops. We'll see how this works. And I tried to make every test can account for more than one thing. So in addition to testing a different number of drops, I'm also testing the polishes in a different order, which a lot of the times if you're having trouble with polishes spreading, just flip the order that you're dripping them in and it can make a really big difference and then I'll also be testing different base colors so get the other half of my strip to dip here and dunk in and that hopefully that'll show across on camera that's a lot more defined in the center I think I'm still actually using a little bit too much polish and it might be a bit much using hollow as the base color also so let's try this another time and as I set that one aside to dry I think I will try this one with just eight drops and see how we go So with only eight drops, I do feel like some of the outer rings are a little bit more uneven. The number of drops also can be influenced by what design you're doing. If you're doing more strokes and you're dipping more polish out in the middle, sometimes you might need a drop or two more than if you're doing a very simple design where you're not dipping that much out of the middle. You want that middle course to be as clean as possible when it's going to be part of the actual design. You know, if you're drawing a flower and you're not using the center of the flower, it doesn't really matter. You can still get the pretty parts on the side. But for this, the clover is really the centerpiece. And that turned out okay, although with no base color obviously that bald spot in the middle is even more important to close up completely because you can see there there's a little bit of white um of course you could just cover that up with a rhinestone or something too i think i'll try that one more time but doing the colors uh lightest to darkest again This kind of really shows up, like I was saying, how dripping them in opposite order can affect the rings. In this one, you're getting, even with just eight drops, a much larger center circle and some pretty wide rings on the outside. So I'm not going to waste this. I'm going to draw it in, but I can see that in this order, the clover is going to be much, um, unless I can manage to shrink it in the cup once I draw it in. So I'm gonna finish my strokes. I'm gonna just anchor it to the sides of the cup so that it doesn't move around like it was. And then I'm gonna try and dip in the center and see if this will shrink much if any. And it's really kinda not. No. It's kind of staying in place. The outside rings are not dry, but they're just not pulling in as much as I'd expect. I hope that comes across on camera. Usually when you dip in the center, all the rings will kind of contract. In this case, it's like the outside rings are staying almost in the same place, and all I'm doing is pulling out that center color. So 
try to get this whole thing on here even though it's much too big to fit on my nail and there you can see the result of pulling out that center color which I mean almost everything even a fail sometimes does give me an idea for a different manicure if you were going for that look if you had a cool color underneath maybe that would work for a clover it doesn't work and it's much too large even on my big old nails a clover that size is not gonna fit whereas this one same colors same number of drops just in the opposite order the center lightest part definitely would fit on my nail but you know it's not really quite as defined as I would like so I think I am going to give a try with some of my alternate polishes so let me get those organized alrighty I'm keeping the two middle greens mint julep and last harvest and I'm going to try them the first one I'm gonna try is Joanna and then the second one I'm gonna try is Arc de Triumph Joanna's kind of a really light hollow gold and uh, Arc de Triumph is um, I mean it's got some gold in there too if you hit it at the right angle it's also got some very small little flakies in there which I'm not sure how they'll react in the water but I guess we'll we'll see once we get going and I am still sticking with all colors by Laroe just just because <laughs> no special reason and I see that the surface of the water is a little bit scummy here so I'm just going to clean it off with a drop of polish and I think I'm going to use Arctic Triumph just to see how it spreads on its own in the water and actually it spreads quite well spread that over the surface by running around the edge like that and I'm kind of pleasantly surprised to see that but I'm just going to pull pull the skin out and that'll pull up all those little scummy bits and should leave me with a pretty clean surface so like I said I'm gonna start with the other polish with Joanna and see how that goes with these two greens and I think I'm gonna go for about nine drops with these we'll, we'll see how they spread Again with the clover in from each side with a very light touch and then in from the other sides. And I like the way this is looking in the cup. That's not always an indicator that I'm going to like the result once I dip though. And dang it. I was going to say you can see the glob of polish, but the glob of polish can turn very quickly into a hole, particularly with this design. Uh, just got plain test strip this side. Uh, white paper acts like a white polish would, which is pretty much kind of a neutral. Oh. And I'd say I went for like one or two drops too many again, just getting overly overly eager I guess you could say but I do like those colors together let's uh, let's try it with two drops less polish so I usually try to keep things as a multiple of the number of polishes I'm using if that makes sense just because it's easier for me to count the rings when I know I've gone through one complete uh, rotation of the colors so to speak but that's that's just a little preference in my head it's not necessarily a hard rule to stick by because sometimes that's not going to work out so great as you just saw with that one let's get this final drop in there 
And I think part of the reason I'm inclined toward more drops is because you can see the outside rings are not as even when I've got fewer drops. But hopefully the design will be cleaner with this one. And two more strokes. And practicing is not only good practice just because you want to see how something will turn out, but just practice in dealing with the polish in the water, practice in having a really light touch when you draw, practice in everything. And yeah, see that's a lot better. So this is the difference that two less drops of polish makes. This is a much, much cleaner clover, but really it's slightly too big to go on my nail. I might maybe be able to cram it, but it would fit pretty good on my thumb too for that matter, but like on my pinky, that's not going to fit on there. And that's the tricky part of this design. Whether you want part of your design, whether you can manage to shrink it down, or how you deal with the challenges, so to speak. Um, let's see. I think for this, I'm going to start out again with the same seven drops, since that worked well for the last round. And I've switched over now to the other color, to Arctic Triumph, and we'll see how it plays with the other polishes, because just because a polish spreads on its own does not mean that it's going to play nicely with others. And I'm not getting super great spread here. Even with a little tap to the cup, which sometimes will encourage the polish to kind of almost blossom open, we've still got a pretty tight bullseye here. Which is not ideal, but on the other hand, for the clover, if it actually works, can be really good because it'll be proper sized to fit on my finger. And that's a little bit uneven there, but we're only testing, so it's not the end of the world. As long as you're getting close to the design you're going to want to do on your nails, so that you know you're not going to have to make any drastic changes, that's the whole point of testing. So I've got another plain white test strip here. That clover still looks kind of messy, but I'm going to go ahead and dip. And see how it... Oh. Yes, that was a sound of extreme disappointment because... Ick. Hmm. I do have one other... Well, not one other. I have actually several others, but... Let's give the same combination a try, but instead of Arc de Triumph, I'm going to grab Golden Rule. This is one of Colors by La Rose stamping polishes, and I'm hoping this will spread a little better, play a little nicer, but we'll just have to wait and see. And you may or may not have noticed that my water is starting to get a little bit green, which may or may not indicate that these polishes would also stain my nails. It doesn't happen very often that the water actually starts to tint while I'm water marbling, but it does happen sometimes and most often with blues and greens. Or maybe I just notice more often with blues and greens. A bluish tinted water wouldn't wouldn't really seem that strange, so I might not notice it. Oh, can you can you guys see, like as I go to start drawing there, that that's already dry. This is again where having a light touch helps you because since I didn't have a real firm touch there, it didn't grab the whole thing and make a disaster. I'm able to move into the next ring, which is still wet and still actually be able to draw my design but that is a little bit of a problem it's keeping it very small though very tiny little clover i have to work here and the whole design is spinning 
This is why I usually anchor the edges. But in this case, with the outer rings drying, that also is another kind of tricky area where you have to be really careful. So, let's see if this little tiny clover is worth it, even though it's giving me issues and attitude. And we'll dip that on the other half of this strip. And, yeah, that's no. That would be a no. Alrighty, I wasn't really planning to use this color because it's not, in my opinion, Super St. Patrick's Day-y. But I did have it pulled out, so somewhere in the back of my head I obviously wanted to use it. But I'm going to try the two greens with... Uh, move this. This is Black Gold Texas Tea, and this is a black hollow. And... I think my my gut feeling, my, my instinct, is that this is going to spread better than the others. So I'm going to go back to nine drops and hope that my gut instinct is correct and see how this goes. Okay, these spread out decently, although we have another lopsided bullseye. And honestly, I have no idea why sometimes they don't stay properly centered. I thought for a while that maybe like my desk was not level, but that wouldn't explain why I have the problem sometimes and not others, because I always work on my desk and I don't always have the problem. I mean, I've had it mixed results just during this testing. You know, that is so far off center, I'm not even going to dip this one. It looks about the right size, but I really, I'm going to redo this bullseye. Okay, same colors. Same problem. Slightly different area of the cup. I almost wonder if it was from me like tapping it to try and get it to spread because it lop it was even until I tapped it and then it lopsided itself right over to where I tapped, which is not usually something that happens. Let's actually dip this one even though it's so crooked. And having it at the edge like that just made the edge break. Water marbling is all surface tension. When you get to the edge of the cup and it's like the edge of the ring is right at the edge of the cup, then you see you like lose you lose your rings to marble with. But at least we have some decent rings here. Let's get this out as much as I can. And that's actually quite pretty. I have a little bit of pulling, if you guys can notice, where the, uh, the black is kind of bleeding into the green. But I like that. Um, of course, if I can't get this, I can, if I can't get these to spread evenly, I'm not going to be able to do a clover because I'm not going to be able to dip my nail that close to the edge of the cup. So let's try this one more time. I'm going to clean the surface before I start just to make sure that's not a problem. One other thing I did want to mention. Uh, be mindful of how full your cup is. Because the cup sides, at least the cups that I use, the sides are not straight. So the full your cup is, you have a slightly larger circle. This is actually not quite as full as I usually fill my cups, so I'm actually working with a slightly smaller space that may be part of the problem. But I'm just going to cross my fingers that these spread evenly this time. That looks really good. 
I resisted tapping the edge even though I really wanted to. Even though I don't know if that's what was causing the problem or not. But, uh, got an even bullseye this time. We get to draw an actual clover in this time. And then, of course, with a design like this, you have to decide if you want it on all your nails or if you just want it as an accent. And if you're just going to do it as an accent, what you're going to do with your other nails. So, let's get this dipped. And now that's kind of odd. I got a cleaner clover with the lopsided bullseye. <sighs> that doesn't make much sense. I guess it's still kind of recognizable as a clover, but let me. I need to get another strip ready. All right, I actually went ahead and added a little bit more water to this cup so you can see now the old line was like down here somewhere and now we're up here. So I think that should help. I'm gonna try with one last drop of polish. So eight drops instead of nine drops. Cross my fingers for another even spread. Of course this isn't already even. Come on and hope for a good one. Alrighty, anchor the sides. Sometimes that will also help spread things a little bit depending on how <clears throat> how far you have to pull to anchor. Gonna draw in the clover very carefully. Guys are probably sick of seeing the same design, but as tempting as it is to play with other patterns, I want to make sure that I really get this right, or I'm going to be very disappointed when I get to my manicure. Again, be careful with that center hole. And might be wondering well hey can I like just drip some polish right there to fix that technically I suppose yes I've never really had much success with that it tends to want to expand more than you want and kind of wreck the design so I really try to just shrink it as much as possible can even like I showed a couple times like a redraw your lines which brings more polish back toward the center and sorry for missing the end of that cup but here are the results and I'm pretty pleased with them a little bit of blurring but only the best kind as far as I'm concerned and the reason my camera cuts out is usually for two reasons neither of which I can do anything about with this camera. First is I can only record segments up to 10 minutes long, which isn't usually a problem. And other is that it runs on batteries. I don't have anywhere to plug it in. And sometimes I don't notice right away that that little battery indicator is blinking. So if it cuts off due to time, I can just start it right back up again. You don't really miss much. If it cuts out due to the battery, I need to finish what I'm doing before I can switch the battery. So, that said, even though I said before that the hollow as a base was a bit much, because I do have some bald spots, both in the middle and kind of on each of the strokes, I'm going to try the other side of this. I'm going to add the, the lighter of the two medium greens, uh, mint and julep I guess this is, for what I think will be my final little test and then I think for this last one I'll play around a bit with the pattern too. So I'm going to stick with that amount of drops which was 
eight drops. And I'm going to try and add just a little bit of side details so that if I dip multiple fingers in this with one as the clover and the others as, uh, I don't know, what do you call the nails that are not accent nails in an accent nail design? Regular nails? Um, anyway, so that the nails that are not accent nails also get a design. And as you can see here, the bullseye has gone wonky again. Which, I, I don't know, that's going to be a problem if I can't figure it out. Hopefully not a huge problem, but kind of an issue. Especially if I want to dip multiple nails. But I'm going to try and kind of center my clover where it's drifting. Like that. Then I'm going to come in from the sides. But rather than just leave it at that, I'm going to try and kind of like create some petals here but still have mainly a clover in the center if that makes sense. I, I don't know if this will actually work. I'm trying to... In fact this would probably be a lot easier to do if this was centered in the cup. And you can see even the clover is getting lopsided and it doesn't want to let me shrink it. My thought was that if I arced in the petals I could end them all on that center stroke of the clover. Um, not so much. <laughs> but we got enough of the pattern here to try it and see how it'll look over the... Oh! Okay. That was nearly a disaster right there in real time. <laughs> I did not quite spill my whole cup of water, but that is yet another reason why I always recommend working on a paper towel. It won't save you from a whole cup, but as long as you have some others handy, it can save everything around you. It'll give you a couple seconds to avert disaster. Um, that kind of messed up the design. Well, not kind of. It did mess up the design. But I'm still going to dip it just because I'm done testing now. And I just want to see how it looks over this color. And sometimes I'm just like that. I can be 100% into something. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know what? I'm done with this. I don't want to do this anymore. And I like that over that green as a base with these colors. I feel like it adds just more green even to the black. And works pretty well with the pattern too. Or I think it would if I had, you know, the real clover on here. And I even like the way just those uh, petals look on their own, so possibly we'll see. I might pick just a accent nail as a clover and then dip the other nails together with petals on them, because I do like the way that looks. I have to wait and see. Well, actually, you won't have to wait and see, because this will be going up after I've done the manicure. It's so weird recording stuff and... Uh, knowing it's not going to be published in the same order that I'm recording it. So, I don't know, that probably gets a little bit confusing. But that is my testing. Um, if you are wondering what my last resort combination was going to be, I have many times marbled with a black and a clear to peep through at something underneath maybe a gradient or maybe glitters which generally speaking don't marble very well and that was my plan with this i was going to pick a black and clear combination and do a marble on top of are you ready this is so great i i may have a new problem because this is one of the polishes in fact let me zoom in here so you guys can get a real nice look at this gorgeous awesomeness. Uh, ILNP, I love nail polish. Uh, they had a pre-order going on, and they had their spring collection, and they had the magician, 
And then they had, of course, all their other stuff that they usually have, including this duochrome flaky glitter type of thing going on here. I hope it comes across on camera half as awesome as it is in real life. Um, sometimes it's really hard to tell how these things will transfer, especially because so much depends on the angle of the light. But I hope you can see that that was going to be my base under a black and clear water marble. And I'm a little bit sad that that's not going to happen now, actually. But I'm sure I'll find something else to use that in. If you want to see the other colors that I got in that I Love Nail Polish haul, I do plan on recording a haul for that, along with a haul for my last three months of Colors by LaRoe purchases. As you can see from all this testing, I already have quite a LaRoe collection, and I add to it almost every month. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think, like the last one. I don't think this is going to be quite as long as that first one was, but still definitely looking for feedback. Subscribe if you're not already, and turn on that notification bell so that you always know when I have a new video up. And as always, thanks for watching. P.S. Sorry, just realized I showed you this awesomeness and caught it from all angles and gushed over it and didn't tell you what it's called and this is open fields i believe they call these their like multi-chrome glitters although i could be wrong on that but it's awesome so sorry i forgot to tell you but thankfully i remembered to tell you so again thanks for watching